Hey guys, Jason here with another for sale video on this 1950 Plymouth Deluxe. Stay tuned. That's right, this 1950 Plymouth Deluxe with a V8 conversion is ready for sale. And if you're interested in it, there will be a link in the description box down below so that you guys can go take a look at in-depth pictures. And of course, we're doing this video so that you guys can get up close and personal and all that good stuff. So let's take a look. So when we got this thing, it rolled in on the trailer because it was a no start. No battery, the engine would not roll over. And this thing has been sitting for approximately 23 years that we can tell because the inspection sticker ran out in 2000 and the tags ran out in 99. So if that's the case, you're probably not gonna be driving this thing around. It's probably gonna be sitting in a barn somewhere in an undisclosed location where mice can get in and start chewing the interior. Because they did do that a little bit right there. And right there. And right there. But this, I don't believe this is mice. I believe this is just wear and tear on an old seat. Now, from what we can gather, just based on you know the amount of time that we've been spending working on this car, is that this car likely had a restoration in the 80s. We can't narrow it down too far, but we do know that the engine and transmission is likely out of a 80s era G body. It's a 267 V8, so a 4.3 liter V8. Uh, I can't tell from my own memory or my own experience whether it's a 250 or a 350 transmission. And the front clip looks like it's a Nova, Chevy Nova front clip that's been grafted onto the existing frame of this 1950. The rear differential is a GM again, it's a 10 bolt. So basically, you've got a 1950 car sitting on a G body platform. But all of the wiring has been upgraded probably during that restoration or that street rotting or that whatever you want to call it back in the 80s uh, with an upgraded wiring harness. So everything has been updated from the 1950s crap that it likely came with. And yes, I know a lot of you guys are going to say that this car, you know, it's a piece of junk or it's uh, ruined because it's got a V8 and it doesn't have the original six cylinder or it's sitting too high or too low or got the wrong tires, wrong hubcaps, whatever. This car, the intention of it was to buy it, get it to stop, start and steer, which we've done. And now it's ready for you to come take over, make it your own, do as you wish and enjoy this car for many, many more years to come. Before we get into the interior, let's pop the hood and take a look at that big, well, it's not big, it's a V8. Let's take a look at it. So there it is, there's the 267, and in all of its original glory, uh, made it up to that three-speed automatic transmission. It does have a fairly new battery into it. It wouldn't hold a charge when we first got it, but it seems to be doing okay now. Every time we go and start this thing, it starts right up. It does have the original radiator, um, which doesn't appear to leak. Uh, the horn works, the brakes all work, everything is there. We did go through the entire fuel system we replaced the gas tank, all the lines, the filter, right up into the carburetor. We even tore the carburetor down and scooped out years and years of sediment and grime and crap. You should have seen it. We've even got the carburetor adjusted to the point where I can reach in here right now. I can give it half a pump on the accelerator. And she starts right up. Now, at some point, somebody has put dual exhaust on it, so it does have straight pipes all the way back with some, what looks like cherry bomb mufflers. But it does sound good. I'm sure it's just a very low compression V8, but it's got plenty of opportunity to do what you want, whether it's to put a six cylinder back in it or to hop up that horsepower and get this thing slammed on the ground, which is precisely what I would do. Let's go around, look in the trunk before we hop into that interior. Now that trunk is operated on two very heavy springs and uh it'll catch you in the chin if you're uh if you're not careful uh but the floor in here yes it's got a little bit of a scale um we did have to put a patch in here when we were doing the gas tank we noticed that there was a few pinholes so we cut out that bad spot this is the original spare tire well we've treated it with some rust off uh there's the back of the seat all the stuffing is mostly gone because of the mice and there's your third brake light hanging down in the trunk 
but uh, it, it's going to need some work back here to clean it up. Not a whole lot, I don't think. But then again, this is not a car that we are selling as a perfect full restoration car. This is something that's going to need some TLC from you so that you can make it your own and that you could actually make this thing roadworthy. It's very, very close. We are going to take this thing for a drive down the road and back, but there's a few things it's going to need to make it pass a safety inspection. At least it would here in the province. So right now the emergency brakes don't work. Um, and the wipers are completely shot. They're, they're eaten up. As you can tell, they wouldn't wipe much water. But the suspension is tight, the brakes work, the thing stops, starts, and steers, like I said earlier. All the lights are working, brake lights, turn signals, all that stuff. There's a look at your dual exhaust and your brand new gas tank. Fuel lines are all the way up. It does have a few flaws. It's got a little pinhole right there. Uh, previous work has been done. If you look at the top of the fenders here, yeah, it weighs back. The rear window was not in the car when we bought it. Uh, we reinstalled it with the old rubber, but because of the age of the rubber, yeah, uh, she's, she's in pretty rough shape. But there's a brand new one from Steel Rubber Products. We did do a few touch-ups on it. Uh, this bottom corner, we did some touch-up on the paint uh, just to make it look a little better. And uh, if you come around to the front here, there's a little bit of a dent on the top of the fender. It looks like something fell on it at one point in time. I'm not sure that the camera will pick it up, but you can see the scuff marks. Uh, over here, uh, there's a little blemish where we touched up the paint there. All the chrome is there. Every single piece of chrome is on this car that came on it when it was new. Is it in perfect condition? Absolutely not. This is a driver. This is not necessarily a showpiece or a trailer queen. This is something that you can actually hop in, drive it. And you know what? Here I am standing about 10 feet away. It looks really, really good. To the trained eye, you can look up and see that that's a Chevy badge doesn't belong on a Plymouth, uh, but you can also see some of the flaws, the nicks, the dents, the scratches. Again, you're gonna have to make this your own. If you're not an experienced body man, this is probably not the car for you. If you don't have a huge budget, this might not be the car for you. However, with a very little bit of TLC, you could probably get in this thing and, and likely daily drive it in warmer climates. The visor, do we leave it? Or do we take it off? I happen to like it because what I can see if I was to buy this car and keep it for myself, I can see some wide white walls and this thing lowered about six inches further than what it is right now, maybe even on some airbags. Tint the windows, black out the chrome, and you've got yourself a moonshiner. Who am I kidding? I don't know what a moonshiner is. I mean, they look good. So now let's hop into the inside and take a look. So a couple of neat things that I like about this car is this little piece of stainless right here or aluminum, whatever it is, that's so your fingernails don't scratch the paint. That's pretty cool. The door lock, it's got the little thing that slides one way or the other so you can get the key in there so you can lock your doors. Windows roll up and down. Vent window, I wouldn't try it. Side window also rolls down part way. And the seats are meant to fold forward and pivot in the center so it's easy access inside. With only one hand, there you go. That's an easy step in to jump into the back seat. Now we did peel all the carpet up from the floors purposely because we wanted to make sure there was no rot or any uh, undue moisture underneath the carpet. Over here you can see where we put a patch panel in, uh, but down here on this side and underneath the seat there's a couple of spots where someone has done that before. On the interior, all of your gauges are there. Uh, they don't all necessarily work. I don't think the amp gauge works, but the temperature one does. I think the speedo does. Oil pressure works and I believe the fuel gauge. So if I turn this on, if I turn the key on, it's gonna show you've got a quarter of a tank of gas. And if I start the car, it's gonna show that we've got no oil pressure, but probably because the gauge doesn't work. For some reason, somebody kept the Oldsmobile steering column in this. Uh, yes, the key is there. Yes, the shifter used to be here, uh, but they've got a floor shifter. Not sure why they did that and put the ignition switch over here underneath the dash. Uh, very simple uh, with by today's standards anyway, that you could have taken the ignition switch and you know just replaced something in here. In fact, the key's still there. Uh, headlight switch is here, it still works. Uh, again, we turn the turn signals on, that lights up going right and left. And for me, the seats are set pretty decent that there's lots of headroom here. The problem isn't here, it's here. 
this is eye level for me. <laughs> so when you get in, you gotta duck your head down pretty low. It does have heater controls. The fan does come on. You can feel some breeze. It's also got this little lever right here so that when I push that forward, it lifts up the vent on the cowl to kind of give you like a built-in air conditioning and they work really well. Going down the road, open that up, the air sucks through. If you get your back windows open, it'll take the hat without your head. Once this thing gets warmed up, we're gonna take it for a little rip down the road and let you know all the gears shift, stop, starts, and steers. So I couldn't have picked a better day to do this. It's, uh, with the humidity, it's about 106 degrees out today. And this thing's got no air conditioning and it's black. So the belt squeaked a little bit. It just shifted into third gear, but everything's there. It runs just like it should. It steers pretty straight. It doesn't wander all over the road. Let's just hope that gas gauge is accurate. Because that would be fun. And the speedo is working. go guys 1950 Plymouth Deluxe runs drive stop start steer all that good stuff and it looks amazing doing it even with the little flaws that it currently has guys if you're interested in this rig 14 grand Canadian 10 grand US dollars if this is something you're interested in there's information down in the description box below where you can hit us up uh, if you're in the US we can help you get it stateside no problem at all just bring cash, serious offers only, and I will not be answering any, is it still available? Um, I, if you wanna give us a call here at the shop, uh, my contact information is on the website, linked down below. Give us a shout, we'll do our best to answer any questions that you may have. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not yet subscribed to Old Car Guy, make sure you hit that bell and that subscribe button. It'll send you notifications when a new video goes up, just like this one, and we're so close to 20,000 subscribers on this channel. Thanks to you guys watching and sharing my videos. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's take this thing for a drive again when it's about 109 degrees out.